Well, here we are at West Palm Beach International Raceway with Tommy Kendall. How are you, Tommy? I'm good, thank you. How are you? He's a former uh, racing champion and AMG Driving Academy ambassador, is that correct? That is correct. It's, uh, it's a fun fun gig. I get accused a lot now that I have my own TV show <laughs> and this role. I know. I have what the best else job. You? And I say, well, which one are you talking about, AMG or... I thought I had the best job, but I guess someone, someone else does it. Well, someone has a better one than us because... <laughs> professional racing driver is an even better job but for some reason that doesn't register I know as a job with people as soon as I got on television and started doing this people go I want they pay job. you for that I want your job. <laughs> yeah. well uh, here we are so at the AMG Academy uh, inaugural session right this is the first for this one for year. this year so can you tell us a little bit about it how can people uh, what people can learn in these things well, it's, it's funny because we've been, you know, a lot of companies do sort of uh, experiential marketing where yeah. to get people into the cars and so forth to experience them in, the, in this environment. But what we found is people kept coming back more and more and they, we said, why do you keep coming back? They say, well, there's nothing else. And so uh, the curriculum for the academy was developed in Europe and uh, there, there were three levels originally and now I think there's five different levels, but now we have three levels in the States. And so the idea is a full-blown driving academy with top level instruction. Um, obviously, you know, the point is they'd like to get people into the cars, but also a lot of people are owners that have never really experienced the full capability of the car. I mean, a lot of people say I've driven AMG for years and I had no idea they would do this. Exactly, and an AMG car is completely different from a regular Mercedes-Benz, which is amazing, but an AMG can do much more, right? It's funny, you know, because it's understated and they've, they've gotten a little more aggressive with their styling for the longest time, you know, to the untrained eye. Yeah, it they was look, the same. They look the same. Yeah. To a car guy, exactly. you're like, oh, we know. That, that's, <laughs> the, that's the super We know what was the under the hood. That's the 6.3, that's yeah. the, you know. Um, and so they've gotten a little bit more aggressive to differentiate them more. But uh, yeah, the cars, I mean, the, the number one question I get asked after I take someone for a hot lap taxi ride is, okay, how have you modified this car? From, from a stock one yeah. and I say this is it this Target is goes from a factory. go to the dealership pick it out and uh, because it you know the, the brakes are, are are massive they've always been known for the power plants but uh, over the last several generations of car they've become more uh, you know people demand more of their cars you know exactly. uh, in every way you know you look at a Corvette from the 60s and it went fast but it didn't stop it and it didn't or turn, turn right <laughs> and so now you know compromise is a word that the uh, the luxury consumer doesn't want to hear. exactly they say uh, I want to be able to carry four people I want 500 horsepower it's crazy you think about it 500 horsepower exactly. I want huge brakes I want it to be I don't want it to rattle my fillings you know and I want to be luxurious in the inside too yeah and I want nav and, and so you know it's uh, it's a bigger and bigger list of things and somehow the Germans uh, I'm sure the Germans that do all this don't have suntans because they must <laughs> exactly. lock them in the room and, in the lab and, and I don't know how they do it but I'm glad they do yeah exactly so for example somebody who has none never had a driven in a racetrack can they come and do this well, that's a good question. One of the things I tell people on the, at the very opening is I say, how many of you people are nervous and didn't sleep well last night? Sometimes we'll get some hands. Sometimes I say, yeah. okay, you aren't being honest because yeah, exactly. you know, if you've never been on a racetrack, even if you have, there's a lot of nerves. And, and so that's exactly what this is for. Um, the great thing about this sport, unlike a lot of sports, you anyone can become pretty good at this. If you apply yourself, you get good instruction, and you, and you practice. And so, I mean, I have a family of golfers, my yeah. brothers and so forth, and they're proof that you can you can play for a long time and never get very good. Exactly. At this, if you do it enough. If you stick with it, I mean, obviously to be the best, you need to have a natural yeah. inclination, but anyone can do well at this. Um, and so, yeah, it, that's exactly, we get all types. We get people that have come back over and over and over. That, and they really want to become better drivers. We have some people that come out and say, ah, it sounds like a fun day, and I'll learn something, and they might not come back again. Uh, I would say, you know, three quarters of the people um, really, some are already sold before they get here. Yeah. Three quarters of the people, I think, say, wow, I like this, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay at this. It's interesting to watch the difference between the men and the women, um, because the men, you know, we they charge, we, we, we go, fast, you know, yeah. we're not afraid, I'm not afraid, so. Um, the women listen so well that they tend to get better. You know, they, they have a steeper learning more curve. More patience, right? They have more patience. So the perfect is probably right somewhere in the middle, you yeah. know? Um, but it's, it's interesting to watch. And it's fun for me to see, you know, people, just even in the span of a one-day basic program, the, the level that they drive at at the beginning, tentative, afraid, you know, all over the brakes, and really. And then at the end, actually, you're going by and carrying some good speed. In the two-day advanced, 
at the end of the two day advance, if you're standing, sometimes I'll catch a group of cars going around yeah. and think it's the instructors. They say, wow, they learned something. Medic brake pads or something like, no, that's, those are students. I'm like, no way. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. If you can tell like a couple of tips for people who are driving out there, not on the racetrack necessarily, but like how to like drive better to, to become better at, at, at a performance car. What would you say? Well, I mean, literally the first thing is even before you get started, every single sport, they spend a lot of time talking about your stance, whether it's golf or tennis okay. or anything. Baseball. Baseball, your stance, and your stance in racing is your seating position. Okay. It's something that nobody, some people are never taught. You're like, okay, uh, put your hands at the 10 and 2 position. And if you ask people, what is 10 and 2? They don't even know that it's 10 and 2 on a clock face. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, uh, so little things like address, adjust your seat. You want to have uh, some bend in your leg so that when you're at kind of full throttle or with the braking hard that you're not fully extended. You want to have still a little bit of bend in your knee. Um, some people are, a lot of people are too far away from the wheel. It looks cool when you're cruising to be way far yeah, away and a straight arm, but uh, you don't want to have a straight arm. You want the wheel kind of with a nice bend in the arm. One way, since we're on radio, I'll try to visualize. If you put your uh, arm to the top of the steering wheel, it should fall about where your wrist, your watch band is. Okay. You know, kind of the break in your wrist. And that way, when you bring your hands back to nine and three, not ten and two. Okay. If the steering wheel's That's a clock where you have nine more, and three. More flexibility, right? You have a lot, if you notice, the AMGs, the steering wheel is literally molded for your hand right here, and your thumb yeah. rests right on top of the horizontal spoke. And two things, you know, when, you, when you're driving fast, you want to be relaxed. And it's hard to do when the adrenaline gets going. But uh, when I do my TV show and when I do the taxi rides at the end of the academy, people say, oh, wow, you're so relaxed. Your, your, your hands are supple and so forth. And it's, it takes practice to get there, but that's what you're shooting for. Because try signing your name with a clenched fist. Yeah, well, no, it doesn't yeah, look very good. Yeah. You know, in, in every sport, the more relaxed and fluid you are, the, the better your inputs. And so, you know, by having your hands locked in with the thumbs on top of that, you don't have to hold the wheel very tight. You'll notice that the paddles for the paddle shift are right where your hands are. And the other thing is you can go all the way over 180 from one way to the other without moving your hands yeah, yeah. on the wheel. So your arms cross, but the wheel stays. I yeah. mean, your hands stay on the wheel at the same they position. stay on the wheel. If your hands are a little bit higher, when it goes down, they end up being lower and higher and oh, lower. And so it's little things like that. And, and some people teach the shuffle, but at some point, if the corner's too tight, you have to remove your hands from the wheel. But the more you can keep them in one place and just cross your arms, more the control. better, because you have more control and more importantly, in a slide, one of the critical part of a slide is not just catching the slide. The critical part of a slide is getting the steering wheel back straight exactly. in time because it's what we call so a tank slap where you go training. one way and one way and yeah. one way. And if you don't know where straight is, if you've moved your hands, it's not automatic where straight is. Whereas if you haven't moved your hands, you know straight is back to your original position. Exactly. Okay. And so little things like that. The racetrack is not as important as going fast as going smooth, as you were saying, right? Yeah, and smooth, it, that's one of those things that you can say it till you're blue in the face and people don't listen. Their <laughs> eyes glaze over and, and you talked about the macho, you know, I get guys come out and I, and I start talking about being smooth and I can, I can, it's almost like I can hear what's in their head. They're like, like he's not talking to me. Exactly. I know what I'm doing. I get out there and I really I'm going fast tear it up. And I say, okay, well, knock yourself out. And then at the end of the day, they ride with me and they say, you're so smooth. I said, did you think I was saying that just so exactly. you wouldn't have any fun? I'm not trying to keep you from having fun, but if you're not smooth, you can't st spend as much time close to the limit. And I don't care who you are, no one spends all of their time on the limit. Exactly. But the more time you spend on the limit, the, the closer to the, the maximum you're extracting. And if you're, if you're approaching the limit abruptly, you know, by being jerky, you, you, it's hard to, to stay right on that sort of friction circle uh, the, where the car is at its maximum under braking, transitioning braking to turning, transitioning turning to applying throttle. You can't, it's harder to stay on the limit if you're if you're doing big jerky inputs. Well, that's great also. That's why people have to come and do this uh, three-day program, or at least the one-day program. They, I'm sure they're going to learn a lot, right? Yeah, and it's, it's funny. You know, we have people, there's this one guy that comes, uh, he's been coming for years. He's an older gentleman. He's Southern. He's very soft-spoken. He's, he's not a big shot. He doesn't drive his nice cars, too. And so he's, it's almost invisible, but he's come back so much. You know, I've watched this man progress from being a real beginner to being really d pretty darn good. And when you get to the autocross at the end of the day, we actually, that's where you compete. We, everyone gets yeah. their time and we give really nice prizes away. And all of a sudden this guy that no one has even noticed all day long, they see the time <laughs> flash up on the clock. They're like, who is that? And Ed hops out of the car and they're like, I can't be right. And it's like, it, he's like Clark Kent.
That's a great story. Well, thank you very much for your time. I, I know we're in the middle of the session here, so I really appreciate your time out here. You bet. And uh, where can, I mean, obviously we can find you on TV, but uh, let us uh, know where you, we can find about you and, and what you do. Well, I also, uh, I, I'm on Twitter now, uh, Tommy Kendall 11 okay. is, my, is my sign. Um, I'm also now the uh, NASCAR analyst for FoxSports.com. Yeah. I do all the, the analysis for them on FoxSports.com. Uh, coming up, um, yeah, I have my TV show on Speed Channel there called Test Drive, and another one uh, that we're close to doing the second season of GT Academy. So, you know, if you a lot uh, of places, Google Tommy Kendall. Google Tommy Kendall. <laughs> Who knows what you might find? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, all the information about the AMG Academy will be posted on our Facebook page. So, yeah. thank you very much again, Tommy. Thank you.